What's going on guys? Welcome to Let There Be Math again. And continuing from the previous video, we're now going to be looking at a series of integrals that look very intimidating, but they all obey the same property that we were looking at in the last video, which is the numerator is going to be the derivative of the denominator. Now at first glance, we can notice that everything here has a denominator, which is a complex compound function of x but the numerator is just a 1. So we're going to see how we can manipulate these expressions to get them into this form and hence find an integral that is going to be some natural log. Now for the first example, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this function and immediately we notice, okay, if we differentiate the entire denominator, we're not going to get 1, obviously. So let's just look at one of the functions that uh, we have here. So let's just take the more complicated function just as an initial guess. We're going to differentiate that. So that's d over dx of the natural log of x. And we know that's going to be equal to one divided by x. Now if we look at the other function that is multiplying that, there's a one over x here. So if we were to express this integral in the form one over x divided by the natural log of x, then immediately we can see that now the denominator is going to be uh, related to the numerator and this one is the derivative of that function. So following on that procedure we can now write the final answer is going to be the natural log of whatever function is already in the denominator which is going to be in itself a natural log of x plus the constant c. So even though we started out with an integral that looks very very intimidating we were able to get a fairly simple answer in just two steps by using the fact that it is of this particular form and we got a log inside a log which I think it's quite interesting to look at. Now what happens if you increase the power of that natural log inside the brackets to something like x squared? Well we can apply the same logic let's try and differentiate that function the natural log of some function x squared and now we're just going to find the derivative of that. Well, we differentiate the argument that becomes 2x and we're going to divide that by the function itself, which is x squared. And the next step is we're going to cancel out one of these x's. So we, this cancels out with that power and we're left with just 2 on x. And that's going to be the derivative. Now, if we look closely, the integral we have here is expressed in the form 1 over x divided by ln of x squared dx. So the only thing really we're missing here is that factor of 2. So in order to do this, what we can do is we can place a 2 here. We can replace that 1 by a 2. And to make sure that everything is consistent, we're going to place a factor of a half at the front of the integral so that this to cancel out to get the original expression. And now we can integrate whatever is inside the integral operator. So now the next thing is, we know this is going to result in half times this integral, which is of the form outlined at the top here. It's going to be the natural log of the denominator, which is a natural log of x squared, plus the constant c. And we can of course check that that is indeed the answer simply by differentiating this function, which will require us to apply the chain rule twice. And we would see that we get back to the original expression. Now you might be wondering if you saw the pattern that I'm following here, that there must be a way in which we can express the integral of this function. What if we choose any arbitrary power of x? In this case, I'm gonna restrict x to be something larger than zero, so just positive powers. What's going to happen in that case? Well, let's differentiate that function to find out. So let's take the derivative of the natural log of x to the power of n. Now differentiating that is going to give us n times x to the power of n minus one. And we're gonna divide that by the argument, which is x to the power of n. And now the next thing is we're going to cancel out the power. So that's gonna leave us with n divided by x. So just as we did before, we're going to express this integral in the following way. We have the integral of 1 over x divided by the natural log of x to the power of n dx. And now the only thing missing in this case is that n factor at the front. 
So just as we did in the previous example, we're going to place an n here at the numerator and we're going to divide the whole thing by n. So now we can actually find out what this integral is and that's going to be 1 over n times the natural log of the natural log of x to the power of n plus c. So simply by following this train of thought, we were able to actually find a general expression for any type of function that contains a natural log of x to the power of n in the denominator. So long as there is an x multiplying that function, we can always express the result in terms of this function. And in the next video, we're going to continue with some more examples of this, and we're actually going to apply this formula to finding the integrals of functions like the tangent of x and so on. So if you guys like the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more content from Let There Be Math. And I will see you guys in the next video.